I've had just about enough of this shit. I'm sick of it. Tired of it. Tired of crawling around in it. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. So from now on, no more just wicked Uncle Scrappy dank basement. No! I have joined the dark side. I'm your evil Uncle Squinty now. You see, I had an epiphany, and I didn't even have to wait until January 6th. I had an epiphany. That's an inside joke for us Rocos, you know, Roman Catholics, right? Yeah, that's right. I said Roman Catholic. They will not approve of evil, Uncle Squinty. YouTube thinks I promote tobacco use because I use tobacco on camera, because I comment on a plant substance occurring naturally all over the world, consumed all over the world for hundreds and hundreds of years. YouTube, I don't know how to tell you this. I don't need to promote tobacco for two reasons. First off, nobody's giving me any money to do so. And secondly, I don't need to promote tobacco. Tobacco promotes itself, you morons. I'm sorry. That was an ad hoc. I'm sorry, an ad hominem. Ad hominem attack. I won't call you morons. You're just doing what you feel you have to do, YouTube. I understand. I get it. But let me make a couple of things clear to you right off the bat, YouTube. Number one, I do not promote tobacco use. While I use it on camera, I do not promote its use. In fact, I am very clear to tell the accidental viewer who may have stumbled upon my content and not known what nasal snuff is from the title. That they stumble in, I'm very clear to say, if you currently do not use nicotine, for God's sakes, don't start. Even the cheapest forms of tobacco are expensive in cash, time, social standing, frankly, nowadays, and health. So no, I'm not promoting tobacco use. Secondly, these videos have never been are not and will never be aimed at anyone under the age of majority. If my parents hadn't smoked cigarettes, I probably would not have smoked cigarettes. When you're young, it's easy to pick up bad habits by imitating people around you. So no. Am I proud of the fact that I smoke tobacco? No. Am I proud of the fact that I use nasal snuff? Not particularly. Is, are they hobbies I enjoy? Yes. They're good pastimes for me. Third, this is not an attempt to sell, distribute, or otherwise engage in commerce in any form of tobacco, nicotine derivative, or vaporizing product period, you will notice that there are not paid promotions within my videos. Will I inform my viewers of the one or two worldwide locations where one can acquire nasal snuff? Yes, but it's the same information that that person could find simply by using Google to search nasal plus snuff plus dollar sign. I hope I've made myself clear. I will, as soon as I figure it out, migrate to Rumble. I understand they are less fascist and more even-handed in their censorship. I will not repeat what I went through in my last video 
naming all of the offensive stuff that I find on YouTube on a daily basis. And I'm not looking for it. It finds me. Thank God it's not TikTok. I've been asked about TikTok. I do not trust my data with TikTok, period. I do not want to give them the gateway into my personal life. So please, if you're going to recommend videos, please do not post links to TikTok here, and please do not send me links to TikTok videos in the mail. I am not interested. Thank you. All right, that's awfully serious. You know what I need to perk me up? I think you know. Careful, Paul. YouTube will think you're promoting powdered tobacco. Careful. Okay, I'm going to take this pinch off camera so nobody sees it. Pump video space. Use new video recording button. Stop tech. Pump video recording. 10 p.m. Eastern War Time. Your dial is set at 660. New York. When you suffer from irregularity and take mineral oil for relief, chances are that you get only halfway relief. Constipation can be a problem for anyone. Ladies and gentlemen, a message from the President of the United States. Well, this holiday season, the parties at your house won't be elaborate, of course, but we hope they'll be gay. Magic touch. Flavor and mildness. Thema. Leaves a clean, fresh taste in your mouth. Don't look at it. It may injure your eyes. I'd like to say something to the ladies. Seaman. Don't look at it. It may injure your eyes. Don't look at it. It may injure your eyes. Flavor and mildness. Greetings, everybody, from the bank basement. It's time for another episodio of Pinch, which, uh, squint. Ladies and gentlemen, a message from the President of the United States. Well, here we are, one more time, in the dank basement. Get your snuff. Would this be promoting the use of nasal snuff to the masses? Oh, dear. I hope not. Feel that? It's so delicious. For the safety of your smile, you demon, twice a day, see your dentist twice a year. All right, that was unnecessary. Completely freaking unnecessary. Greetings from the dank basement. Windows Media Player. Shut up. Camera. There we go. I think it's really loud. All right. From the dank basement, as you know, that's right. Paul, sitting here, doing snuff, corrupting children, ruining society, putting out my intrinsic toxic masculinity mixed along with my white privilege, not to mention my blind privilege, not to mention my 
I have lots of tobacco privilege. I have too much tobacco. And that's what this video is about. What am I going to do? I'm serious. Look, this basement, you can't really see it. A lot of the hoarding is in other rooms, but there's boxes stacked up and bins, and a lot of that is tobacco. It's true, I've spent a lot over the years on tobacco, but a lot of it has been gifted to me, a lot of it. And a lot of times, I have no idea what I've got in my hand. For instance, my pal Fred Hanna, you may know Dr. Fred Hanna, very, very famous among the pipe smoking community. He wrote a masterful book called The Perfect Smoke, which you can find on Amazon. And uh, yeah, Fred Hanna's book is very good about pipe smoking. I take issue with a couple of the nice, nicer vagaries, the, you know, the elegant touches that a lot of pipe smokers insist on. I'm basically, you know, Carter Hall and a cord and cob pipe, I'm a happy boy. But he does have uh, some awfully, awfully good knowledge about tobacco. And he sent me a whole bunch of opened tins for me to try. Well, as luck would have it, or time being what it was, a lot of these got shelved. Now remember, he sent them to me open, so, and when they arrived, they were already pretty dry, as this one is. Well, fortunately, that's not fatal. If I want to smoke something and I found out that it's dried and it's open tin, all I have to do is put in a couple of drops of water into the pipe tobacco, preferably distilled water. I mean, you want it clean. I would use happily water from my boiling kettle that I make my coffee with. Uh, but you can, you know, put some clean water in there, just seal the tin back up, shake it around, let it sit for a day, and all the tobacco will come back to a nice humidity level for smoking. And if it's not enough humidity, just add another drop or two of water, repeat the process until it gets where you want it. No big deal. But I have no idea what these are. Now this to me feels like a McClellan tin. This could be amazing tobacco. It could be Greg Peas, GLPs. I have no idea. By the way, if you identify all the tobaccos I'm holding up for me, uh, if you identify them for me, there will be a prize involved for the pers first person who puts a comprehensive list in the comments. Won't be much of a prize. In fact, probably will be worthless, but it will be a prize. And no, it won't be an opened tin of pipe tobacco. Here's another one. Now this, I can tell, a rectangular tin that dates this as being very old, well, very old, five, six, seven years, eight years old, at least. I don't know. When did they go to just the round tins like this? Again, I'm not doing a very good job of holding these up, and I'm pretty sure the lighting just blows. But if you can see them, that would be a huge help. So those are three from the Fred Hanna collection. And I think that's where those are from. I couldn't swear to it. Uh, then I find jars. And in the jars are often plastic bags. Why do I do that? I buy a tobacco. I try it. I go, mm, that's pretty good. I'll go back to that. Put it in a nice jar with a tight-fitting lid. Walk away. I guarantee you this tobacco is four, five, six. Who knows? Maybe 2019 maybe 2018, maybe 2020, who knows? I have no idea what this is. I know it's an aromatic. It smells sweet in the bag. It's got a little bit of propylene glycol in it, I'm pretty sure, to keep it moist. So there's a little humectant in it. I imagine you will not be able to read this, but hope springs eternal in the heart of a fool. All right. Well, if you can give me a hand with those, that would be super helpful. I found bullets. The only I own. That's a thumb drive. That wasn't a bullet. Empty pill bottle. I like them. Oh, cigar band. Where did that come from? This place is getting dirty. 
Okay, well, I'll find that later. Uh, I found a couple of snuff bullets. No idea what's inside of them. Found three tins of snuff just today. I just sniffed one of them. No idea what the hell it is. I bet you won't be able to tell either, but we'll try. I think I'm holding it upside right. Yeah, okay, take a look. I'll hold this palm of my hand and I'll rotate it. Maybe. I don't know. Can you see it at all? Well, tell me in the comments if, if I'm holding this badly or if you really need more light or whatever. No idea. So that's my problem. But if you identify the five examples of tobacco I just held up, there will be a meaningless and probably worthless prize for the first person to list all five. Now, as soon as I get someone with eyes over here, I will verify your answers. This was just something to do today. Uh, it was kind of a boring day with nothing to do, oddly enough, which is rare for me. But today, just I got the laundry done. That was the big project for the day. So this is my life. But uh, yeah, it's a boring day with nothing to do. Just grab a load of developmentally disabled people and take them to the zoo. Yeah, Dead Milkman. Do you recognize the lyrical genius of the Dead Milkman? Mid-19 to late 1980s. Uh, I think they're out of Philadelphia. They're someplace out of Pennsylvania. I'm pretty sure. They're crazy. Bunch of guys just making noise and very clever lyrics. You gotta love a band that comes up with a line like, if you don't know Mojo Nixon, then your store could use some fixin'. Punk Rock Girl, 1988. So, uh, yeah, so they said they had a song called Taking <clears throat> a Word for Developmentally Disabled People that is no longer permitted on YouTube and take them to the zoo. Okay. I don't know if you knew this, but if you watch pro sports, a lot of times the bumper mu music will be, let's get it started, ha! let's get it started, hey, hey. let's get it started, right? That, that wasn't the original lyric. When the Black Eyed Peas first came out with the song, it was, let's get developmentally disabled in here. That's funny. Or not. Anyway, it was a boring day, so thank you for making it less boring for me. I'm going to get back to my laundry and try to figure out all these. This place is seriously, it's starting to look like a hoarder house. I mean, it's, it's bad. It's all, I got tins and bags and boxes of this. This is, what is this? Oh, this is Country Time Water Enhancer, Lemonade Flavor Water Enhancer that I thought I was getting a small package of from Amazon and ended up getting a case. Oh, bottle of olive oil. Now, why the hell... Uh, oh, okay. I know why I got a bottle. Let's see what else. Bottle of booze, but that's to clean the pipe. That's for pipe cleaning purposes. Box from headphones. God alone knows. I got a lot of work ahead of me. We'll talk later.